Did Brian Koeberger have a more sinister plan in mind when moving to Pullman, Washington? Could it be he had no plans to perfect his craft in psychology criminology, but only use it as a crutch, such as Theodore Bundy used law school as a crutch that he miserably failed at because his insatiable appetite for killing overrode his scholastic ability, abilities. Could this BK character only travel to the Pacific Northwest to become a killer, only study psychology to learn more about himself and use his knowledge, psychology, criminal behavior as a crutch to fuel his desire to kill innocent women. I want you to listen very carefully at this information by Jennifer Coffin Daffer, ex-FBI agent, and you tell me what you think. Welcome to the vault. Coffin Daffer to maybe help uh, answer some of those questions. So Brian, you know, Jennifer just told us that uh, we saw the video of those investigators taking items out of the home. What is the strategy there? Why are they taking those items out now? Well, I would believe they're taking them out possibly for further defense evaluation, you know, taking them to a place where the defense can uh, work on them and further evaluate them. Nothing about this crime scene throughout has made a lot of sense from when they first removed uh, the items uh, that belonged to the victims and the individuals in that house uh, to uh, when they released it, knowing they had a suspect. It made sense if there was no suspect and no foreseeable suspect. And then now to see them go in, uh, they're gloved, so seemingly trying to protect what's left of this uh, crime scene in these beds. Uh, but because it's under court order, all I can uh, believe is that they're taking it to another location for it to be further examined, possibly by the defense. And Jennifer, you know, speaking of things that make no sense, obviously, you know, first and foremost, the, the brutal murder of these four innocent college students. Uh, but are you also surprised that, that a person who is studying for a PhD in criminology allegedly, you know, left behind DNA, also left behind the sheath of the supposed murder weapon, as well as a footprint? Well, a lot of people who are extremely book smart and make amazing grades and find their way to be great writers and, and studiers don't have common sense. And I think we're seeing that case here. His common sense went out, went out the window in this case, driving his own car, bringing his phone, uh, then turning it off during the crime, uh, then turning it back on. Uh, I believe the sheets was not purposefully left, but rather in the frenzy of everything going on, fell off his belt. Uh, it was just really uh, a comedy of error after error. You know, and, and last question for you, Jennifer. There's a lot of focus, you know, on, on that information we learned uh, in the unsealed affidavit yesterday. One of the surviving roommates saw this black clad figure walk past her and then out of the home. What was your reaction to that? Well, my reaction to that, uh, based on not only personal experience, unfortunately, but also teaching this, and uh, when people are in a situation where they're facing high stress and trauma, and in her case, possibly completely fearing for her life, she has an unknown figure, all masked up. Uh, she had heard reports of somebody being in the house uh, from uh, Kaylee, I believe. So I think she completely froze in fear, which is a very usual response when something like this happens and you're in this grave fear, and that she receded into her bedroom and possibly passed out. So uh, I think it's just very difficult for us to judge someone unless you've been in the face of death possibly staring Well, I think face. what's surprising is not even judging her, because absolutely I'm sure she was in shock. I'm shocked that this you know, alleged killer would walk right past someone. That's, you know, kind of what it, what seems amazing to me. Right. So if we look at, as an, as an example, uh, Ted Bundy, who committed horrible crimes in the uh, sorority house, 
he left many victims, walked right past their rooms. Uh, he only attacked four, I believe two died. So this is not unheard of. Uh, I believe it would have taken a lot of force, strength, power, exhilaration to kill these four individuals. A lot of things were going wrong. The dog was barking, I'm sure, uh, as he visualized things. Didn't expect the blood yeah. splatter the noises so I think it was time for him to leave he felt yeah and, and we are happy of course that that you know people did survive uh, former FBI agent Jennifer Koffendoffer thank you so much for your time let me you. news nation is the source he had no common sense Brian Koiberger that's been said often about very smart intellectual gifted people that they can't walk and chew bubble gum at the same time, don't know what color light to cross the street on. And I believe that is the situation here with BK. Very smart, too smart for his own good, as the older people used to say back when I was a child. Too smart for your own good, indeed. Survivors left too. One on the first floor, one on the second, we learn in the affidavit released to the public. Mind-blowing, matter-of-factly. And you're entitled to your opinion of what you believe pertaining to the two survivors, what they knew, heard, saw. Did they give the accurate information, the truthful information to law enforcement? You're entitled to your interpretation. Odd it is, one survivor that visually saw the perpetrator walk by her so was he drug-induced, frenzy, tunnel vision, saw this girl standing in the doorway, DM, and let her live? Or didn't even notice her? He was in a frenzy. As I said, tunnel vision. He walked right by her. Did they actually have eye contact? She says he had bushy eyebrows. So his visual by her, given to law officials, matched his driver license ID, left a footprint at her door, naturally in blood, left fingerprint on a button of the sheath, the case that holds the knife that has never been recovered by law officials, lying in the bed besides Maddie Moak, with also Kaylee Gonzalez in the same bed in Maddie's room. Dog left behind in Kaylee's room. One survivor on the bottom floor and this DM on the second level, which we never knew. Mind blowing to me because I wasn't expecting that. But this is what happens when you listen to rumors and rhetoric and you don't have verification of who really stayed where inside of the house. So here we have a surviving roommate, DM, having a visual of the perpetrator walking by her exiting out of that glass slider on the second level, leaving behind endless clues to his identity in the long run. Seven weeks, he was identified, arrested in Pennsylvania, leaving behind DNA at the house where he lived, putting things in trash bags to discard in other neighbors' trash bags. Very peculiar, suspicious. Ping phone data. Cellular data puts him at the house. Foolishness, driving his car to the scene 12 times in the general area and the house, turning around in the road, trying to go in the driveway. What was going on with this perpetrator? Going back to the scene of the crime, saying morning, 9.30 a.m. To do what exactly? 14 minutes or so. Doing what? Sitting in the car, trying to contemplate if he wants to go back into the house because he realized he left the sheath behind. So where's the knife? Discarded somewhere in Idaho, we believe, Washington State. They have data that he was very busy driving in many different locales in Idaho. So where has he been since August of 2022? Here, there, everywhere. Doing what? Shopping. Shopping is best in other locales. Well, one can't argue that because to each his own. But did he drive far out to discard the weapon? Hide it, not discard it, but hid it. In case I need it later. 
Did he deliberately move to Washington State to become a killer? You also hear at the end of this commentary by Coffin Daffer, ex-FBI agent, that Theodore Bundy escaped jail Pacific Northwest many moons ago and traveled to Florida to a sorority house and attacked four women there. Attacked four women. But two survived. I want you to think about that number. Four and two. Because this person, Corey Berger, this thing, this madman, killed four in this house at 1122 King Road, but two survived. Stay woke now. Four deceased, two survived. Ted Bundy. Four attacked, two lived. Once again. Four attacked, two survived. Moscow, Idaho. Four dead, two survived. Four and two. What an odd variance. Similarity. You be the judge. Was he trying to emulate Theodore Robert Bundy? Brian C. Kuiper. Did he deliberately travel to Washington State to perfect a craft of savagery, murder, but failed? Because as you hear in this commentary, he had no common sense and left many clues and a blueprint data that led to his apprehension and left behind an eyewitness on the second floor to identify him as having bushy eyebrows. DNA left at the scene. And whatever else DNA they have gathered in this investigation. Could it be he was stalking the girls from Pennsylvania? Because you see, social media is public. If you put your page on public, your profile, your platform. And could he have been fancied, fancied these young ladies way across from the East Coast. Did that have occurred to any of you? Because it is very strange that his phone has brought forth data from August 2022 up until November 13th, the day of the murders. Pinging at that house in general area 12 times. So that means he went to that general area house 12 times since August of 2022 getting a Citation in August in Lytown County and also another traffic stop. So one would have to ask themselves, what's this the ultimate plan? To deliberately apply to school in the Pacific Northwest, get accepted to kill innocent women victims. Possibly knew of these people's profiles living in Pennsylvania. All an intricate plan. Seems a bit far-fetched, I know. But when you're dealing with the mind of a deviant, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no logic. It's not supposed to make sense. Did he plan this crime? Months ahead of time? Year ahead of time? Who's to say? We will wait to see what Law officials have as far as data on his phones, apps, Google searches, pictures, photographs, videos, commentary. How long he's fancied these young people. Or was it just happenstance? He just drove deliberately to Moscow to have a hunting ground outside of Pullman, Washington and happen upon these individuals. One was a target, one was not. Three were collateral damage. Two were collateral damage. We will never know because he won't admit to the truth. But I believe he traveled deliberately to Washington State 
to emulate Ted Bundy because the numbers are very interesting, as you hear in this commentary by Jennifer Coffin-Daffer. Four attacked and two lived in the sorority house in Florida, Moscow, Idaho. Four killed and two survived. Four and two, each scenario. Six total were in the house, of course, in Moscow. But the number of dead versus survivor is still even numbers. Four and two. Four deceased to survive. Florida, sorority house, Ted Bundy. Four attacked, two survived. Once again, four and two. Moscow, Idaho, four and two. Eerily similar. Very similar. Will he ever admit to the truth that he sought these kids out, stalked them on social media? As I said before, he will exhaust all measures through the court system and then finally tell the truth of his diabolical plan that transpired on November 13, 2022 in Idaho. I do believe if the car had not been discovered by video surveillance, he would have killed again. And some of you speculate that he possibly has killed before. And that would be atrocious to know that he has because some can't believe a person would just wake up and kill four people at one time. What is the truth? A lot of traveling he has done since touching down Washington soil. Driving from place to place to shop. Saying that shopping was better, Idaho. Maybe to each his own, but where is the knife? Did he drive an hour or so out to discard the knife? Because they have detailed his whereabouts through cell towers, pings, so on and so forth. And I believe he discarded that knife a little ways out. Or did he hide the knife? Put it in a place that he can go back and retrieve it for his next victim. Plural. Interesting. Did Brian C. Koeberger moved to Washington to kill, studied psychology, criminology as a backdrop, crutch, for the ultimate plan to become a murderer, serial killer, moved deliberately to Washington State to emulate Theodore Robert Bundy. As I've brought you content and stats, the Pacific Northwest has produced a lot of serial killers. The state of California has the most victims of serial killers, 1,777 to date. Alaska stands at number three. Once again, did he move to Washington State deliberately to kill, to become a murderer, and to emulate Theodore Bundy or another serial killer, BTK. Did studying these people push him over the edge? Or did he study psychology, criminology to discover more about himself because he knew something was growing inside, a demon? So what pushed him over? Being bullied, ignored, neglected as a child, not being able to navigate properly amongst young people, didn't know how to talk, converse. False sense of self, was not happy with self, didn't like himself. Who is Brian C. Koeberger? And had that Elantra not been identified, would he have killed again? I do believe he would have. But luckily, he had no common sense. And that is how he 
was apprehended. What will we learn in the upcoming weeks and months pertaining to this mad person? Childhood, relationship with his parents, siblings, other improprieties that he's done that nobody has spoken about but will share it. No girlfriend, no dates. Has he ever tried to attack anyone verbally, physically, or sexually? Has he ever been with a woman sexually? Is he impotent? Can he perform? Has he ever been with a woman? A lot of questions. We will see if we get the answers. But what would be more diabolical besides the deaths of these young people is if he was stalking them from the East Coast. As I said, may appear far-fetched in theory, but you don't know people. And when you're dealing with a deviant mind, all bets are off. Because there's something sinister that has not yet been revealed by law officials to the public. And I think that would be the clincher that he's been watching from afar and deliberately moved to Washington State to become a killer and kill these individuals specifically. Wouldn't that be interesting to know? Because if we find out he touched down in August of 22, on Washington soil, that means he deliberately started hunting prey in that same month by getting citations, driving citations. So he was out hunting when he should have been working and going to school and classes. I also learned that he applied for a job at the Pullman Police Department dealing with logistics and data. So I believe he was using his knowledge of criminology, psychology, as a crutch to commit crimes. The more he learned, the more he would be able to attempt to perfect the crime, crimes and try to get away. That seems to be his purpose before being apprehended. The more I know, the better I can be at this killing game. But thank God he was not successful. Who is Brian C. Koiberger? Did he move to the Pacific Northwest to emulate Ted Bundy or another serial killer? Has he killed before? Well, this was his first crime in Moscow, Idaho. What will we learn from him? Will he ever speak the truth and reveal who he really is and his thought process? Is he mentally ill or lucid? I think he's very lucid and aware of his faculties. He deliberately sought these kids out. because he stayed on the scene on the 13th for about an hour. So he knew what he was doing and could have easily turned around and went back home. Thank God he was apprehended. Theodore Bundy. Four women attacked. Two survived. Brian C. Koiberger. Killed four people, two survived. I watched something recently pertaining to a post where someone responded that perhaps in this case here, he let someone live deliberately. Could that be the case with Koiberger? He was trying to emulate Ted Bundy by killing four and leaving two to survive. He knowingly knew 
Six was in the house on that fateful morning. Interesting. Four and two. Ted Bundy. Four attacked, two survived. Brian C. Korberger. Four killed, two survived. Eerily singular. Thank you for joining me. You have been listening to The Vault.